I'm Camila José Donoso, the director of Casa Rochelle. I am Rochelle Terranova, I'm protagonist of the film. And I'm Diego Alberico, also an actor in the film, which is about one night in this particular club, that if you watch it, you'll be in a trance state enjoying the film. Chicas, tenemos que practicarlo. Hagan una fila. Esto. Poco a poco el pie se irá acostumbrando. Además, recuerden que deben de medir su pie para que sepan exactamente su número. Ok, vamos a volverlo a hacer. Pero ahora tómense el, el papel. Sienta la actitud. Realmente siéntase reinas, hagámoslo, ya están guapas en tacones como querían. Pero te vuelvo a repetir. Tú no eres gay. Sigue siendo heterosexual. Simplemente descubriste que habemos otro tipo de mujeres. Porque nosotras también somos mujeres. ¿Y viene seguido? Muy, muy contadas veces. De hecho, a mí me gusta venir porque soy bisexual. Yo hetero. Entonces, ¿qué carambas haces aquí? Pueden estar en un table. Bueno, yo aquí lo que veo son mujeres. Welcome to the Berlinale. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Um, Camila, you made a film about an event location in Mexico City where everyone can express who they really are and live their sexuality openly. How did you come up with that idea? Bueno, eh, lo primero decir que la película se realizó por eh, la relación que tengo tanto con Rochelle como con el resto de las protagonistas que en la película aparecen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that this film got made because of the relationship that she has with Rochelle and all the ladies that appear in the film. Mm -hmm. Yo las conocí un año antes de preparar la película. Eh, y eso también significó para mí encontrar, así como lo es para otras personas, eh, también para mí fue una especie de refugio en el que pude, eh, junto con las chicas, pensar eh, las cosas que en la película se ven. So she met all of them like a year ago uh, before filming mm -hmm. and she had like a really close bond with them mm -hmm. in the sense of like a refugee to find herself and them as well. Y y también lo importante es que durante todo el proceso creativo que fue más largo que la misma filmación porque estuve seis meses eh, desarrollando la investigación y la producción y el rodaje fueron seis días, o sea, era mucho más importante el proceso de investigación que, digamos, el rodaje eh, en sí, porque era un rodaje documental muy específico. So, um, like the whole creative process of pre-production was longer and was like more interesting because of all the investigation that uh, uh, was required. Mm -hmm. And so, actually, the filming process was only six days, but it was okay. six months of research and bounding with the, okay. with the whole project. Okay. So you said you met her before, and where did you meet her? Nos conocimos porque una amiga trans me llevó al club mientras yo estaba presentando otra película que hice acerca de una mujer transexual. So they met because a friend of Camila's, who's also trans, mm -hmm. took her to the club because she was at the moment with a film about uh, another trans uh, woman. Mm -hmm. And y ella me llevó al club y yo inmediatamente tuve una conexión con Rochelle, una amistad que surge como cualquier amor que nace la primera vez, una conexión. Y yo me fui de México ese año, que fue el 2014, con la idea de hacer la película. So, uh, once uh, Camila arrived to the club, she immediately had like a spark and a uh, connection with Rochelle. It was like almost as if it's like love at first sight. Mm -hmm. And then she left, which is it was in 2014. And 
she already left with the idea of making a film. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. And you, Rochelle, you actually do have a club in Mexico City. And uh, my question is, how similar is it to that club which we see in the movie? It is, are there dark rooms as well? Are there cabarets as well? Are there, what, what is it? Did you shoot it at the same place or? Mm -hmm. Pues que efectivamente tienes un club en México y quieres saber que cuál es la diferencia de lo que se ve en la película con el club en realidad, que si sí, sí tienes el cuarto oscuro, si no, este, y pues las cosas. Que... Bueno, <risa> el, 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 en la película retrata mucha de la parte que es Club Rochelle en esencia. So the film it actually portrays like the very essence of uh, the, the actual club. Y que esto nos lleva a tener que es un oasis para la comunidad travesti. So you could like gather from this that it is actually an oasis for the trans community. Okay. Y entonces eh, la gente puede llegar ahí a disfrutar su sexualidad. And people just can go and enjoy their sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pero también, the picture, la película tiene de ficción porque por eso es una película, no es un documental. Okay. And in in a sense, uh, the film is a bit fictional because it's not a proper documentary. Mm -hmm. Pero sí tenemos el espacio para la gente travesti donde damos cursos, talleres de personalidad, eh, tenemos derechos humanos dentro de nuestro de nuestro club también. And in this place people can go and have like the freedom of being a trans and they also give courses of personality and also they have a, like a human rights thing for this kind of community. Because Rochelle is activist too. Yeah. Yeah, in, yeah. in Mexico. I know. Y entonces este, también existe la parte de la sexualidad de la gente y Club Rochelle es un punto de encuentro para que se conozca. And it's also like a gathering point for to have the sexuality mm -hmm. that you can be free with mm -hmm. and it is a place where people can go and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And in the movie, we see they have uh, workshops, kind of workshops. And I wanted to ask you if in your club there are also workshops for transgender people. And why do you think it is necessary to give them? Que se ve que das los talleres y que quieres saber si sí existen esos talleres en el club y por qué crees que son necesarios tenerlos. Es una realidad que existe, que lo hacemos desde hace 13 años. It's uh, a reality that we have, that she has the workshops at the place and they're, they've been doing it for 13 years. Okay. Y para la gente que lo toma, eh, es una herramienta para construir su parte femenina. And the people that take the workshop, it's like a tool for them to build their uh, personality. Okay, okay, I see. Sí, hay que contar que son hombres que, que están casados con familia. Ah, muy bien, sí, claro, porque la gente que va eh, tiene una vida de varón y entonces necesitan este espacio exclusivo y privado para ellos. So, people that actually go there have like a double life, so they need this space to find themselves and, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and be. Okay. Yeah. And another question for you, Roche, because I read you're an activist in Mexico, and I wanted to ask you how does your work look like as an activist? What are you doing? Que ella leyó que es activista en México y que quiere saber cuál es tu trabajo como activista, qué es lo que haces. Claro. El hecho de, de tener el club ya es activismo porque ayuda a estas personas a desarrollarse. So the having the club is all it's by itself it's an activist uh, thing to do because mm -hmm. it's a place where you can help people mm -hmm. pero también en mi parte en mi otra parte de la vida estoy eh, como una organización civil donde con, en conjunto con otras organizaciones hacemos el activismo de derechos humanos mm -hmm. and besides this she's also like a social organization Mm -hmm. and she works with other organizations mm -hmm. for the activist uh, purpose. Okay. Sí. 
y en eh, Ciudad de México hemos logrado eh, el cambio de identidad, el poder cambiar nuestro nombre original a nuestro nombre femenino. I mean, they have accomplished also in Mexico cities that you can change your name from a man to your woman's name, like legally. Ah, okay. I see. Además de luchar por la no discriminación. Also, they fight for the no non-discrimination, mm -hmm. no discrimination. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Wow. And um, what can you maybe tell us a little bit about the situation for queer people in Mexico? I know, I mean, it's a big topic and stuff, but maybe you can say something short sí. about it. Um, yo podría decir que siento que hay una intención desde la legalidad, eh, digamos, de cambiar un poco la situación, como dice Rochelle, hay nuevas leyes de antidiscriminación, etc. Uh, like there's a sense of wanting to make a change for the mm -hmm. situation and the laws, like Rochelle said, for the community. Pero eh, creo que a pesar de esas leyes, yo creo que no son suficientes para hacer un cambio cultural real, porque a pesar de que eh, podemos, digamos, eh, quejarnos porque nos discriminan. Eh, nos siguen discriminando siendo mujeres o, o, o trans entonces digamos yo creo que esa esa cosa legal necesita de otras cosas educacionales culturales para generar eh, una transformación real okay regardless mm -hmm. of the things that are happening it's not enough because people are still being discriminated against and it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a trans, mm -hmm. you get discriminated. So uh, there's a feeling that there's need to be more to make that change possible. Mm -hmm. Claro, y también, o sea, un cambio cultural, un cambio que tiene que ver eh, no solamente con que uno pueda demandar, porque de hecho tuvimos casos de compañeras que perdieron sus vidas trabajando en el trabajo sexual o lo, o lo que sea, entonces, digamos, lo legal eh, todavía no genera eh, un cambio cultural importante. Entonces, yo creo que el cine y lo que hace Rochelle en su club, eh, digamos, puede ayudar realmente más que las mismas leyes. Sí, yeah, so, um, within like the change of the law, uh, it's not enough because what we need is a cultural change. Mm -hmm because uh, there's actually, during the film, like, uh, there's been some murders against, just like from hatred, mm -hmm. and what we need is a cultural change that can, like, provide what... Como el trabajo que hace Rochelle. Like the work that Rochelle does. Okay, oh, yeah. Quisiera agregar que, eh, en este momento que estamos disfrutando de este glamour del festival, siguen existiendo crímenes de odio a la comunidad LGBT. And yet, whilst being here, like enjoying the whole festival, there's been still violent hatred uh, yes. things against the community, and we are here. Like. Yeah. Y por esa razón el Club Rochelle es un oasis de resistencia ante ese mundo violento y machista que está alrededor, afuera, digamos. Y en esa manera, el club es como un oasis contra todo lo que está pasando. Sí, por supuesto. Un lugar de resistencia. Sí, un resistencia. Sí. Genial. Why I, I had the feeling like a lot of lines were improvised because it felt so natural to me how you were exchanging your experiences about the outside world and how you have to hide and etc. And um, was it is it true that your own experience became part of the movie or how did it develop or was it scripted at all? Eh, ambas, o sea, muchas eh, de las protagonistas, eh, Rochelle, Liliana y Lía, que es otra de, la, de las chicas que participó permanentemente en el proyecto, estuvieron grabando durante toda la filmación y el desarrollo eh, grabaciones de audios. Y con... Yeah, so uh, Rochelle, uh, Liliana and Lía, which are like the three main uh, girls in the film, mm -hmm. 
uh, during the process of investigation, they were recording uh, actual lines from people. Mm -hmm. Entonces, esos diálogos que fueron filmados de manera documental, digamos, eh, fueron la inspiración para crear el guión de la película, que después ellas mismas actuaron en un proceso de ficción, digamos, con una puesta en escena de ficción. So those recordings, uh, what was being said, mm -hmm. was like the inspiration to take it for the script, and then while once the script was written, okay. they had to perform as well what they initially said, okay, like in the sense of the documentary. Yeah. But now it was a fictional thing. It was like a like a mise en scène, like a mm -hmm. fictional theatrical way. And now a question for you as well, <laughs> so you don't have to translate all the time. Why did you want to become a part of the movie? Why did you want to uh, yeah. Yeah, do that movie? Uh, well, when I met Camila, she told me about the project and yeah. it was really interesting like what she wanted to do with this, with all the same things that you, we explored during mm -hmm. the, the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited because otherwise, like I would have never completely gone into this world, mm -hmm. which I'm uh, proud to know now <laughs> and obviously a great relationship I had with everyone <laughs> and for me the thing was that um, it wasn't the conventional way to approach as an actor mm -hmm. it was a great challenge what Camila proposed to me and that was really exciting for me like mm -hmm. all the challenges that, that made me want to do this and become part of it because because I obviously believe in it so yeah yeah Maybe you can tell about the real character. Oh yeah, also uh, <laughs> the recordings the that they did, uh, yeah. the girls while well, chatting with other people, yeah. in, in, the inspiration comes from real men talking. Mm -hmm. So most of my dialogues are inspired by a guy mm -hmm. uh, who I play mm -hmm. in a way in the film and <laughs> Uh, so I had to like listen to all the conversations that he did so I could like approach to the way he composed himself in this place and then after filming I actually met him he came to the party and, and he was like oh that, that's what I said and I was like yeah 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 I, I know I said them but yeah it's, yes. it's so funny because you actually meet the guy you're trying to portray okay wow. yeah um, another question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other projects planned in the pipeline? What is your future work life? I have like? a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell me a little bit about it. Um, el primero es, eh, estoy terminando una película que llevo trabajando hace tres años, que se llama Nona y es acerca, bueno, es una película más personal que la interpreta mi abuela. So I have a lot of projects on the way, uh, but the first one is the one that I've been working on for three years and it's a project that's really close to me and it's about my grandmother. Sí, y ese es realmente el proyecto que tenemos que terminar este año, incluso eh, yo estaba desarrollando Nona y viví un poco todo lo que era la burocracia del cine, ¿sabes? Como postular a fondo, esperar. Y también por esa razón hice Club Rochelle porque quería como alejarme de eso y poder realizar algo con mayor libertad sin esperar postular a nada y que fuera una película más austera también. So the idea is to finish this film this year because mm -hmm. whilst doing it she uh, got involved with all the process of filmmaking and asking for money and then applying for some uh, the well, bureaucracy yeah, of the cinema, bureaucracy okay. of cinema yeah. to get things done. Yeah. And while she was doing that, that's one of the other reasons that she did Rochelle, mm -hmm. well, the film, because it's a way to get away from all of that and just to be free to do mm -hmm. what, what you want. Yeah. Well, I wish you good luck with that. Thank you. Have fun at the Berlinale, guys. Thank you Thank for you. the conversation. It was really interesting. Yeah. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.